Okay, welcome everyone to the uh, the class tonight. We're going to be studying Rosh Hashanah because next week, uh, it, next Sunday night, will be the uh, will be Rosh Hashanah, beginning of Rosh Hashanah, and so uh, just I'll let you know now that uh, there will be no class next week because uh, we will be in uh, services having our, our Rosh Hashanah service on Sunday night. So um, let's go ahead and begin our, uh, our class tonight. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kidshanu B'Mitzvotah V'Tzivanu L'Asok B'Divrei Torah Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the Universe, who sanctifies us with his commands and commands us to Roast ourselves in the word of Torah. All right. Now, um, we have uh, taken a, a break this week from our study of, of um, Daniel, and we will continue that. We will pick that up um, in, uh, in a couple of weeks. Now, like I said, next week we will not have class because that is Rosh Hashanah. And uh, we will be having uh, services at Tree of Life Messianic Synagogue in, uh, in Katy, Texas. And so uh, I encourage each one of you to uh, uh, be in the synagogue someplace. Or, or if you uh, wish, you know, Rosh Hashanah, you can, uh, you can celebrate it uh, at home. And you can blow your shofar uh, at home and uh, uh, just... Uh, enjoy and you know worship the Lord that way all right let's um, go on now uh, Rosh Hashanah is the first of the fall services uh, fall uh, festivals uh, the feasts uh, that come in the fall you you know that in the spring we have uh, four feasts you know have you have uh, uh, Passover uh, first fruits uh, the unleavened bread and uh, Shavuot, and then in the uh, springtime or in the fall, uh, we have Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and Sukkot. Now, the we as Messianics, uh, we look at the fall festivals as being partially uh, fulfilled in that, or the spring festivals as being partially fulfilled because. Uh, Yeshua was uh, sacrificed. He's the, the Passover lamb. Um, then uh, he was also the first fruits of those who have died. He was the uh, perfect uh, sacrifice. He was the unleavened bread. You know, when the, he said, I am I'm this the, the bread of life. And he said, I'm the bread, you know, of this sacrifice. And so then he is also uh, in the uh, Shavuot. Um, he... Uh, the the um, Holy Spirit was given during that time that day of um, of Shavuot, as well as you know traditionally we uh, we believe that uh, the Torah was given on that day in in uh, uh, Mount uh, Sinai. Uh, so you can see that those those festivals in the spring have been partially fulfilled. Now. Uh, then there's you know there's a kind of a long uh, long period there from uh, Shavuot until now we're coming up on uh, Rosh Hashanah and then now you know this in the fall we're going to be having uh, you know several uh, festivals you know we'll we'll basically have uh, three of them in just over a two week period and so it's a it's a very busy time for us and. Uh, so we're going to be studying uh, Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah it says uh, this is there's some other names for it. It's literally the head of the year, uh, the beginning of, uh, of the year, the Jewish New Year. Um, now the um, another name Yom Teruah, which is, is a day of shouting or a blasting, and it, it implies the shofar or a trumpet. It's also known in, in uh, some of the writings and, and uh, some of the uh, prayers as the uh, day of remembrance, Yom HaZikaron, and uh, then also um, it's the uh, Yom HaDin, a day of judgment, and uh, then the, you know the the other name for it is Feast of Trumpets. So it has you know has uh, quite a quite a bit of, of names, and um, it uh, it comes from 
Uh, Leviticus uh, 23, here's uh, some of the uh, scripture verses for that. Um, Leviticus 23, it's 23 through 25. It says, Adonai spoke to uh, Moses saying, Speak to Benai Israel, the people of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you are to have a Shabbat rest, a memorial of blowing, a holy convocation, and uh, you are to do no regular work, and you are to present an offering made by fire to Adonai. And then there's a second uh, uh, scripture passage there that uh, is Numbers um, 29, is 1 through 6. On the first day of the seventh month, you are to have a sacred assembly. You are to do no laborious work. It is for you a day of sounding the shofar, and you are to prepare a burnt offering as a pleasing aroma to Adonai. One young bull from the herd, one ram, one uh, and seven male lambs a year old without flaw. With their grain offerings, a fine flour mixed with oil, three tenths of an ephah of uh, of uh, the with with the bull, two tenths with the ram, and one tenth with each of the seven lambs as well as one male goat as a sin offering to make atonement for yourselves. Also offer the burnt offering for the month with its grain offering, the regular burnt offering with its grain offering, and their appropriate drink offerings as a pleasing aroma to Adonai as an offering by fire. Now, um, I guess you've noted, you may have noticed here that, uh, what does it say, on the first day of the seventh month. But then we just got through calling this the um, new year. Now, why, do, why is it, um, you know, why, why do we call it a new year if it's the seventh month? Now, we know that uh, uh, God called um, uh, the first of Nisan or Nisan uh, as the uh, beginning of the religious year because that's, uh, that's when he said, okay, this will be the, the first month of the year for you. And, you know, we know that then on the 14th day of the month, and we, we uh, celebrate uh, Pesach or Passover. Um, and, but now we're down at the seventh month of that calendar, uh, and it's uh, the first day of Tishrei. And uh, that's Rosh Hashanah, the head of the year. That's the, and so what that is, it's like... Um, we have several ways of counting uh, the new year, a new year or a different year. You know, we had, um, and many corporations will have um, a fiscal year. When you begin your, your uh, year for accounting for inventories and for your budget and, and uh, different, uh, different things like that, or your taxes, um, then you will have, uh, sometimes we'll have, uh, say, a school year. Well, the school year begins. Uh, you say it's a new year for the school. And um, so uh, it's the same. It's similar in the Jewish calendar, the Hebrew calendar, that they have actually several times that it's, okay, it's, we start a new year or a new um, segment within that year, um, and uh, for instance, uh, the first of Elul, which was uh, uh, the month that uh, we're uh, just finishing up, is uh, it's the um, uh, new year for tithing on your animals. So that's where you account for the the tenth. Uh, you begin counting there for your for your animals, and then uh, the fifteenth of Shabbat. Uh, is the new year for trees that happens uh, along about in February. So, um, and that's the uh, where you start counting the the tithing for uh, for what comes off of your uh, fruit trees and uh, produce. So there's several times throughout the uh, the the Hebrew calendar that are actually new years, as it were. Um, I believe that. Um, the uh, looking at uh, Rosh Hashanah as uh, the the new year for the secular year, uh, it um, it kind of came out of their uh, Babylonian captivity, is what I've I've read on that. That 
that was the way the Babylonians started their their new year. So, uh, you know, the Jews kind of picked that up um, while they were there in the 70 years of, uh, of captivity. So that's why we, we say that even though it's in the seventh month of the religious calendar, it's the first month of the secular calendar. And, you know, it's uh, it, so that's that's how that uh, that's how that goes. All right. And uh, there's um, there's some things before we get to the uh, the food uh, part of it. Um we, we know that um, um, Rosh Hashanah, it, it, it's the beginning of uh, what we call the 10 days of awe. And um, I think we've got, um, well, I may have some, uh, some other slides for that later on. But uh, um, like one week before Rosh Hashanah, that's, in, that's where we are right now. Uh, you know, the atmosphere of repentance is, uh, you know, it's it just uh, intensified. And so, uh, you know, their people are getting ready for Rosh Hashanah. It's a time of uh, reflection, a time of self-examination. So it should be kind of a serious time uh, in addition to also being a joyous time for the, uh, for the new year. And in fact, in, in Orthodox traditions, uh, the... Um, the men will, uh, the, on the day before Rosh Hashanah, Arab Rosh Hashanah, the Orthodox men will undergo a mikvah or a ritual bath, and then the uh, cover on the ark of the, uh, you know, the the, the ark that uh, that uh, holds the Torah scroll. It's turned or it's it's changed from normally it's a uh, purple or, or some color like that. In some cases, red or whatever, but uh, it's turned in. Uh, into um, a plain white cloth indicating purity and um, so there's there's some you know some traditions that uh, that go along with um, with the Rosh Hashanah like I said it's sometimes called Yom Teruah the Feast of Trumpets and um, traditions also tells us that uh, the the universe was created on um, uh, Rosh Hashanah, or some traditions say, no, it was created on the 25th of Elul, so that Rosh Hashanah marks the sixth day of creation when uh, when the Lord created um, Adam and Eve. Now that's that's tradition. It's not uh, it's not particularly uh, biblical. So uh, that's that's just how that has grown out of uh, you know the the writings of the sages and and uh, uh, tradition. So, um, the, uh, the when we call it the uh, Yom Hazikaron, the Day of Remembrance, uh, that's uh, in reference to uh, Leviticus 23 and uh, 24 there, uh, where it says to blow the shofar and uh, to remember, and uh, it really doesn't tell you exactly what to remember, but again, tradition says, well, remember the, uh, uh, it's kind of like the coronation of uh, God as the king of the universe. So um, that blast is, is supposed to wake us up from our sleep and uh, jolt us awake and to, to let us know, you know, who we are in the Lord and uh, uh, what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be awake and, uh, and um, alive before the Lord. Now, um, there's some, the, the theme of, of uh, Rosh Hashanah, it's uh, one of uh, kind of repentance. And according to Jewish tradition on Rosh Hashanah, um, the, uh, the righteous, the uh, Sadiqim, uh, their, their uh, names are written in the Book of Life. And then the, the destiny of the wicked, the ones that are just terrible people, the Reshaim, they're written in the Book of Death. Again, traditional uh, traditional Judaism. However, many people, or maybe most people, um, they uh, you know they're not going to be written into either book. 
and uh, they have 10 days until Yom Kippur to make things right and, you know, to get forgiveness for all the things that they've done for the year, to uh, uh, ask, ask for forgiveness. And so uh, these 10 days of awe is also the 10 days of repentance. And then on Yom Kippur, uh, all of those who have, have asked for repentance, their names will be written in uh, the, uh, the book of life. And so a lot of the, the prayers, if you look in the, uh, uh, there's a, actually there's a special siddur for um, the high holy days, Yom Kippur and uh, uh, um, Rosh Hashanah here, that uh, it's called a makzur, or a, it's basically a siddur for the high holy days. And also, uh, of course, for uh, Sukkot. And so... Um, the uh, a lot of the prayers that are done in the traditional synagogues are prayers uh, or invocations that are, are made to uh, uh, make us worthy to be written into the uh, into the uh, book of life for the new year. And the uh, sermons uh, typically are about repentance, uh, 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 teshuva, which means to turn a around and turn. Uh, back toward uh, toward God and um, so uh, you know the the um, Torah portion for Rosh Hashanah you read uh, the, about the the birth of Isaac and then on the the second day uh, you re we read about the binding of Isaac or the you know the uh, time where Abraham takes Isaac up onto Mount Moriah as a sacrifice and then the Lord provides a um, um, a ram for the sacrifice. So uh, now we uh, we also uh, you know, even in traditional uh, Judaism they look at Rosh Hashanah and blowing of the of the shofar as being kind of a uh, uh, foretelling of uh, or that's the ushering in of the uh, of the uh, messianic kingdom. And so we'll talk about that a little bit more. But for right now, let's look at uh, some of the foods that we uh, that we have for Rosh Hashanah. And the traditional things are um, uh, apples dipped in honey and uh, round loaves of challah. Uh, you know, normally you have you know when you braid the challah together, it's long uh, long loaves. I started to say long skinny loaves, but uh, uh, when my wife makes Hala, they those things just rise up and they're they're big and fluffy and plump and they're not uh, they're not skinny at all, which is exactly the way they're supposed to be. And uh, but for Rosh Hashanah, uh, you braid it differently and it comes out into a round uh, uh, shape, and that is uh, for a couple of reasons. It it symbolizes uh, you know a crown. Uh, you know the coronation of God, the Creator of the universe, and also it's uh, um, symbolic of a, you know a circle which has no beginning and has no ending. Again, a, a, a reference to God and just the the circle of life, how that how that life goes on. And uh, so uh, I've got everyone muted here, so don't start singing the circle of life. Um, and uh, so we go on to carrots. Now, what, why carrots? You know, they're uh, because it's it uh, plays on a the a uh, Hebrew word and it means for, you know for sweetness. And same with beets. And again, it's a it's a play on words in in Hebrew that you know if we're not uh, native Hebrew speakers, it's it's kind of lost on us. Uh, so, but those are traditional, and as well as uh, pomegranates. Now pomegranates, we can, you know, you can, uh, uh, you know, why you would eat that because uh, pomegranates are so sweet. I like pomegranates. Um, I'm trying to grow pomegranates, terribly unsuccessfully, but we're still trying. But uh, here, you know, it's a picture of dipping the uh, dipping apples into honey, and sometimes we'll dip, you know, bread into honey, and signifying the sweetness of a of a new year, a coming new year. And uh, the, you dip the bread in the in the honey for the same reason. And there, there's a there's a uh, picture of challah that is 
is baked into a round circle and uh, it's just wonderful um, and also pomegranates now uh, again just wonderful fruit we enjoy pomegranates and uh, uh, one of these days I'm gonna I'm gonna just try very hard uh, to, to make sure that I get some pomegranates in my in my orchard and, and can grow those things so um, we're going another tradition in um, Rosh Hashanah, the day of Rosh Hashanah in the afternoon. It's a tradition called Tashlik. Now Tashlik is uh, is kind of a it's not anywhere in the Bible. Okay, it's it's a uh, uh, kind of a rabbinical or a, a Judaic uh, uh, tradition and. Uh, you know, and why do we do those things is because, as Tevia said, tradition. All right. So what that means is the day after. Wait a minute. Why is that? Um, it's in my, the uh, the. I got a deal that says that uh, my screen was not. Uh, it was not showing. So anyway, the uh, the day of Rosh Hashanah. Uh, typically, we would gather at a flowing body of water, um, and uh, then you would empty your pockets. So what do you do? Before you get there, you put uh, uh, bread in your pockets, and um, uh, that you take the bread out of your pockets and throw it into the, the flowing water, and that symbolizes casting away your, your sins. And uh, just uh, you know, getting rid of all of the old things that you've done for the year, and it's it's almost like uh, uh, doing a New Year's resolution, as it were, because we know we we ourselves cannot uh, cast away our own sins. Our our sins are forgiven and uh, they're paid for by the sacrifice of Yeshua. So we can't cast our own sins away, but it is a it's a good. Uh, uh, tradition of the, the idea of getting rid of the old habits and the things that would have weighted us down and kept us back from from um, uh, being uh, leading the life that God would want us to lead. And here's a picture I've, I've always enjoyed about, uh, it's an old traditional uh, painting that uh, somebody did of uh, people gathering at uh, a little stream and they're throwing their uh, their bread crumbs into the water and uh, of course you see the little ducks down there they're enjoying that uh, uh, that ceremony so we look at the uh, let's go ahead and look at the uh, ten days of awe and that is a day uh, the you know days of repentance and uh, that's the the span between uh, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur and like I explained before, that's when the righteous are written into the book of life. And, uh, uh, you know, that's uh, probably uh, one of the uh, uh, best, um, best times to be in Israel because um, all of the uh, traditional Jewish folks are, are try they're on their best behavior and uh, they're nice to everyone and uh, um, so that's a time when uh, you know just a great time to be in Israel or, or to be around the uh, religious community and uh, 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 someone said that the 10 days of awe is a great time to ask your uh, Jewish Orthodox neighbors for a favor because they're they're more likely to uh, to do that so um, but it's a time of you know try of reflection and uh, thinking about okay how have I been this last year what have I done that uh, you know have I done all that I can do for um, uh, for the Lord and have I done what He would have, have wanted me to do in in the, these uh, situations and so it's it's a time to reflect back. And it's also a time to ask forgiveness for uh, sins. Of course, you know we can we can ask forgiveness of our sins at any time. We don't have to wait until these uh, ten days uh, uh, of awe. But um, um, 
you know, it's it's one that uh, we can. Uh, um, it, it, it's just nice to as a as a reminder to us. And uh, the greeting, and the typical greeting during this uh, this time is Lashana Tova Tikatevu, Vatikatemu. And so that what that means is may you be inscribed and sealed for a good year. Inscribed in the book of life and sealed for this uh, for this uh, new year. And so that's what it means. So, and it's normally uh, uh, it's, it's normally shortened to Lashana Tova Tikatebu. And uh, um, you know, and then uh, the response back uh, that people would give you is Gamlecha which means, and to you. So um, uh, that is, um, that's some of the, the, the traditions that uh, we have. Now, um, I wanted to mention that, you know, that since uh, Yom Teruah is, it means the day of uh, blowing, it also can mean the day of shouting. So I guess that instead of blowing your shofar, you could... Uh, shout. Now, I don't know how you shout the the shofar sounds um, other than uh, doing like our three-year-old granddaughter does. And when she gets her uh, shofar and she puts it up there, instead of making the, uh, uh, the shofar sound, she just uh, does the, um, uh, you know, uh, like when I'm playing the, the shofar for something, she'll, she'll mimic it and just woo you know, like that, and uh, and I gotta say, she's got really good pitch because whatever uh, whatever pitch I'm I'm uh, uh, blowing on the on the show for, she she can match it uh, pretty uh, pretty good. Now, um, I've also read some things about where people say, well, um, you know, we're this is not even for shofar uh, shofar wrote or you know uh, plural of, of shofars uh, shofar. Uh, but it, it could be silver trumpets, and um, the the silver trumpets were, <coughs> were used for troop movements, and then they were used later on for uh, various rituals. So, um, you know, some some folks say, okay, well, the um, the silver trumpets, they're, you know, they're, they're obviously different than the ram's horn uh, uh, trumpets that were uh, explicitly commanded to be sounded during Yom Kippur and then and also during the, the Jubilee year. But some people uh, say that, uh, you know, I, I've, I've heard uh, long sermons on, on this where the one guy's, uh, his he's making the case for, we should be blowing silver trumpets and rather than uh, uh, shofar. So uh, I think he's in the minority because most everybody um, uh, blows the, the shofar. And it's just kind of cool anyway. So um, the, uh, you know, we had, we had talked about the, uh, the um, Rosh Hashanah where the righteous are written into the book of, uh, of uh, life and the wicked are um, they're, uh, uh, not written in the book of life. They're written in the book of death. And, uh, uh, but, you know, as, as Messianic believers, we may, you know, this day of judgment, uh, which is Rosh Hashanah, um, um, this says, you know, we maintain that judgment day has come and justice was served through the sacrificial offering of Yeshua for our sins. And that's in 2 Corinthians 5.21. And he is the perfect fulfillment of the Akeda of, of Isaac, or the binding of, of Isaac. Um, our, uh, our sins are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Uh, that's in Revelation 13.8. Uh, and... Uh, uh, we do not believe, of course, that we are made acceptable in God's sight by means of our own works uh, of righteousness. And that, you know, the, the reference for that would be Titus 3 and uh, 5 through 6. But that, uh, but that doesn't excuse us from doing good works. Uh, you know, it's uh, the Holy Spirit is there for us to help us to do good works. And, and James 
talks about uh, you know the 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 idea of the faith and good works. He said, you know, uh, I'll show you my faith by my good works. So um, uh, the the scriptures do tell us that you know that there is coming a day when if our names are not written in the Lamb's book of life, then will uh, those that are not written in the Lamb's book of life will be thrown into the lake of fire. That's in Revelation 20 and 15. So um, this this festival uh, of uh, Yom Teruah, uh, Yom Teruah, Rosh Hashanah, has uh, uh, many many aspects, many layers uh, to it. Now there are also those that uh, speak of the of uh, well. Let's see. Let's go ahead and do. I, I want it before we get into the, the more of the prophetic stuff. Uh, I'm going to try sounding the shofar. Now, I'm not going to blow a shofar here right now. There, there's one over here uh, on the wall, and uh, I was uh, thinking perhaps that maybe, uh, you know, I could blow the shofar, but a man's got to know his limitations. So hopefully this is going to work, and I'm going to uh, try to give you the sounds of, um, of um, the, uh, the shofar blowing. Um, okay, here we go. Let's see if this, if, if this works here. And um, here it is. Okay, now this is going to be all four uh, shofar blast. It'll be uh, uh, Takiya, uh, which is the long blast, Shevarim, which is uh, the three uh, Teru, which is the nine uh, staccato blast, and the uh, uh, the uh, Gadal, which is the long, long blast. This is all four of them, one right after the other, and hopefully uh, you'll be able to hear this. That was the key. Hopefully that uh, um, that will get you back to uh, where <laughs> to uh, this is this is what is the tequila um, the uh, the long the single long blast and that uh, signifies the king's cor uh, coronation the shivarim three short blasts um, that's repentance but it was also it was kind of a making announcement, and, and then Terua, uh, nine short blasts, was, um, you know, a wake up, you know, a wake up call. It's, a, it's an alarm. It's, a, it's a, you know, like we would hear a siren that, uh, today, the, the uh, Tequia Haggadol. Uh, that's, that's a long one. And, um, <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> somebody said it sounded like Sherwood Forest on his iPhone. Uh, yeah, okay, I guess it does. So uh, anyway, um, now I'm, I'm tell you what. Uh, um, yeah, I've been practicing because this this coming uh, this coming Sunday night. Now I've told everyone at uh, at uh, Tree of Life that I want them all to bring their their shofar. So that uh, from the, the oldest to the youngest, all of us are going to blow the shofar. Rather than having uh, one uh, really, really good shofar player up front and he blows and everybody you know, goes, yeah, um, then we are all going to blow the shofar together and it's just going to be a great time. So, um, you know, those of you in the Houston area, you want to come out and visit us on Sunday night and bring your shofar because we are going to have a blast. <laughs> All right. Um, but these are the, uh, these are the, uh, the sounds of the shofar. And um, now, going into the prophetic side of, of things, and uh, we'll kind of finish off with that. Um, um, 
Yeah, and Ray says, yeah, try sounding it on a traditional shorter ram's horn. Well, you know what? I've got one of those, and uh, I practice on that, but uh, now it's been uh, that my little short uh, ram's horn has, uh, has been, um, shall I say, confiscated or whatever, but uh, uh, my three-year-old granddaughter says, nope, that's hers, and uh, I'm not supposed to be blowing on it anymore because that's hers. So I say, yes, ma'am, and there we go. Um, all right. Now, on the prophetic, um, I don't, uh, you know, we, we can get uh, really deep off into, in, uh, into this, and uh, um, we don't have a, a lot of time to, you know, to just go into that uh, for tonight, because I did want to just, just hit on the Rosh Hashanah, but uh, we look at uh, Rosh Hashanah as possibly... Um, you know, it, it remembers the first creation, you know, that's what we had talked about already, but it's also calling the beginning of the new creation in uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 52 and 53. It says, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last shofar. Okay, remember there were seven, uh, seven uh, trumpet sounds in, uh, um, in Revelation. So it says, at the last shofar, uh, for the shofar will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we will be changed. For this corruptible, our, our corruptible bodies must put on incorruptibility and this mortal body must put on immortality. So that uh, uh, many of us believe that uh, it is very possible that um, on uh, uh, Rosh Hashanah or the the day of uh, Yom, you know Yom Teruah, that it could be that uh, that last trumpet sound, uh, that last shofar blowing by the uh, the angels, uh, that will usher in the events that then will lead to the uh, uh, the end, you know, right there at the end times. And so, like I said, I. I don't want to go uh, very, very much into that uh, as to, you know, the eschatology of all of that tonight because uh, we could really get into some good discussions on that. And uh, we're actually going to do that when we uh, continue on in, uh, in Daniel after the High Holy Days and, and we get into the, uh, what some of these things are because we're going to go from Daniel and then segue into uh, Revelation and so, but that's, uh, that's the possibility. That's a, a lot of us. I know personally, uh, you know, I look at when Rosh Hashanah comes up and it's the, the day, uh, uh, day of blowing of the trumpets, you know, I'm kind of expectant that, okay, could this be the time that we see the real speeding up of the end times? Um, First Thessalonians has another uh, take on it. It says, for this we uh, tell you by the word of the Lord that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall in no way precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, the voice of the archangel and the blast of God's shofar and the dead and Messiah shall rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left behind, will be caught up together with them in the clouds and uh, to meet the Lord in the air. And so we shall always be with the Lord. Now, it's kind of interesting. It says, Those, uh, then we who are alive, who are left behind. That kind of falls uh, kind of counter to that series, that popular series of, of uh, uh, books written uh, quite a few years ago, you know, the Left Behind series where uh, you didn't want to be left behind. Well, uh, looking, uh, looking at this, uh, maybe we do want to be left behind because that means uh, we're the ones that uh, the Lord has spared and that uh, we're still believing in him and uh, we're alive and waiting for his coming. And so then we will also be, uh, be caught up um, in, uh, in the air. Now, this question was in, in <clears throat> Corinthians, is it the, First, uh, uh, is it a trumpet or a shofar? Uh, <clears throat> I know in the King James Version, 
it says with the, at the last trumpet sound or um, and then this this uh, version the tree of life version that I'm using here they, they uh, talk about it being a uh, shofar uh, <clears throat> I don't, uh, I don't know the answer to that, whether it's going to be a trumpet or a shofar. I think it will have the same effect, whether it's a shofar or a trumpet. When God said it's time, uh, then yes, it's, it's time. So, you know, I really don't know the answer to that, whether it is a, a trumpet or a, uh, or a shofar. So anyway, the, these fall festivals, the fall feast, uh, for us as, uh, as uh, Messianic believers, uh, we look at this as being, okay, this is kind of a picture of what, um, what will come. The, the uh, spring feasts were uh, the first coming of uh, Yeshua. The fall feasts kind of indicate in many ways the second coming with the uh, trumpet of the Lord, then uh, 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 his uh, judgment and then uh, um, Sukkot being where he actually, you know, comes to live with us, the tabernacles with us, and it's the beginning of, uh, of uh, the millennial reign for a thousand years. So that, uh, that's kind of what we look at the, uh, the fall feasts as being. And so I look at them as, a, you know, as a, in real anticipation that uh, on that, Rosh Hashanah. We don't know exactly what day the Lord will, uh, you know, begin all of this this um, sequence of events. But we uh, we do uh, look forward to that day and uh, um, know that uh, once once that begins, then uh, um, it's it's going to be quite a quite a ride, and uh, the the culmination of all of the the uh, the plan of salvation for for mankind. And so, with that, um, I will. Uh, that's that completes the uh, the uh, lesson for tonight. And I want to uh, uh, remind everyone that next week we will be having. Uh, uh, our Rosh Hashanah service at Tree of Life at six o'clock uh, in uh, Katy, Texas, and uh, look on our our uh, uh, website Tree of Life Houston uh, or on Facebook at uh, Tree of Life. Uh, you know, in the our Facebook pages is again Tree of Life Houston, and uh, uh, you can see the times and and all of that uh, kind of stuff. So again. Uh, have a uh, have a good uh, week, Shavuot Tov.